What I want to do tonight is to recap our 2015 accomplishments. I have, uh, I think you should have received earlier a 17-page report. It's uh, in a fair amount of depth. It'll contain uh, the answer to pretty well any questions you might have, but I am going to touch upon many of the uh, highlights tonight so that they put a context around what we're going to review for 2016. I want to review our plans for 2016 and beyond, and I say beyond because we're thinking beyond one year in terms of our uh, maintenance of the building and in terms of our exhibition planning. Museums that have the privilege of being well run have an opportunity to think forward many years in terms of putting together exhibitions because large exhibitions require a lot of planning and accessioning and borrowing important artifacts requires a lot of lead time. So we're now at the stage where we're starting to think into 2017. I'll discuss those in some, some depth, but I'll dwell specifically on 2016. I will also make our annual request for support and I may as well start with that right now. We're requesting $70,000, which is approximately a third of our 2016 operating budget. This is exactly the same amount of money we've requested for the past two years. We are uh, fully able to handle that and work within that parameter, and we respectfully ask that Council approve that allocation to the Euro Historical Society. With that money and with the uh, other money which we raise through fundraising, and other forms of rental and other activities, we have to accomplish the following. We have to maintain, restore, and repair Hillary House National Historic Site. It's an honor, a privilege, and at times, it's an expensive honor and a privilege to have a building of this type under our jurisdiction and is key to this community. But centrally, that is one of our key core missions. In addition, we operate, uh, we show exhibits, we operate programs, and we host special events all through the year. I'll recap some of the ones that we did in 2015 that were particularly successful. We also maintain, with town funding, an educational outreach program in which we extend heritage programming and heritage education into the school system, and we've begun this year to extend it into the seniors' community. We have eight seniors' residences in Aurora, and we have already had an opportunity to work with three of them toward bringing them to us and us to them. We want to expand that as well as part of our outreach. So we want to keep the educational outreach active and going. Out of that money, we pay staff salaries. We pay all of our marketing and promotions activities, which are not extensive, especially that we've been, now that we've been so successful at getting embedded on social media and our website, which I'll talk about shortly. We also maintain all of the administration, insurance and utilities. So basically, we have to operate all of our programs, our organization, and the building within our annual budget. And that's the purpose for which we're requesting the $70,000. By way of background, we have a long history of working together, the AHS and the town of Aurora. We were instrumental in establishing the Aurora Collection, the Aurora Museum, and the archives, and we've worked together for many years to preserve Aurora's only national historic site. You also, with us, promote interest in our past, and we collectively provide innovative programming and educational opportunities for all Aurorans to enjoy. And I'll tell you shortly how many that has been. Specifically, once again, though, we do operate Hillary House National Historic Site, so we do look to the town to help you ensure that we can maintain this important and central structure and we will do our very best to ensure that it lives for many years on. Let me talk about 2015 in some depth. We had a tremendous year overall. We hosted four exhibitions. I will tell you a little bit more about each of the four shortly. We did something very important. We strengthened our board and our staff. We had a very good board to begin and we added some extremely capable and dedicated people to the board and it's made a big difference in terms of our ability to provide leadership, innovation, and just a general um, uh, environment around the organization that we can move forward with a lot of direction and a lot of energy. We've had a record number of new members and total members. I'll tell you how many that'll be shortly. We've had a record number of volunteers this year. We also had a record amount of money fundraised, something into which we put exhaustive energy. We have a balanced budget. For the second year in a row, we have a $15,000 surplus at the end of the year, which will end up being 7% of our operating budget. We were extremely careful this year in, on both ends of the P&L. We were very careful with the money we spent. We found ways to economize in a number of areas, telecommunications, printing. We looked at ways to economize in lawn maintenance and snow removal. We really looked everywhere we could to make sure that we could continue to do the job for less money. And as you'll see shortly, we spent a great deal of energy on the top line trying to get money and grants into the, into, the, uh, into the coffers through fundraising and applications to the various funding bodies, both of which we achieved with tremendous success. In addition, we invested nearly $50,000 into the house itself. So Hillary House was well treated in uh, 2015, 
Part of that was provided by the town maintaining the front fence, which was a fairly large expenditure. So we thank the town for having done that. But all in all, the, uh, the, the uh, building was very well treated in uh, 2015 and is ready to go for the long term. Uh, we resumed publication, something we hadn't done for some years. We uh, republished something called The Manor, which was originally published 40 years ago. We did a 2015 edition this year with the original authors, and it's now going to print. You're all going to want a copy of this for sure. Come on down. It's for sale in our gift shop. We've also maintained publishing our newsletter, which is extremely well received, six times per year, all done with um, volunteer effort. So our publications are, uh, are uh, resuming. We also have plans for at least one new historic publication in 2016. Our website was an exceptional success. We had a total of about 40,000 visitors or visits. We believe it to be about 6,000 visitors. So it exceeded our expectations dramatically. We brought the management of the, of the website in-house. We now do it inside our own organization. We had used outside support for a while. We now do it ourselves. And with the programs and the ex exhibits we ran, plus the outreach we made through all of the social media outlets, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter, we've had a tremendous amount of interest expressed in our, uh, our website. So it's really improved our reach dramatically. We also finally improved our signage on Young Street. So as people drive by, they actually know that this is the Hillary House Museum. We intend to maintain new signage. As you can see in the lower right-hand picture, our sign was unveiled. Uh, early, in the, early in the fall with the help of the mayor who helped fund it through the mayor's golf tournament. Our fundraising highlights are notable. Um, we did basically everything we could think of and we did it with uh, focus and energy. We have a planned giving uh, 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 program in place. Uh, we did get a bequest last year uh, from the uh, John West uh, estate. I'm not sure it came directly from our planned giving effort of last year, but it may have. We intend to resume it this year, and we think over the long term we will continue to receive bequests from uh, members of the community that hold Hillary House dear. Over our history, we've received many of them. We had a couple of scotch tastings, which we ran in collaboration with Chats. They were very, very well attended. Many of you had a chance to be at those. Uh, we had our Tennis in Canada exhibit, which was titled Tennis in Canada from Early Beginnings to Global Success. We had exceptional reception to this in terms of attendance and coverage. I'm going to pass around, with your permission later, uh, the latest issue of Tennis Magazine, which is the largest magazine in the country published on the subject of tennis. We are the highlight article on page 16 and 17. I do encourage you to, to read it. And some of you, in fact, are pictured in it. So that was a very good uh, uh, program for us. We revitalized our gift shop. Our gift shop was kind of dormant for a few years. It's always had publications related to Aurora's history. It's now got a much broader array of heritage-related items. And it's done very well. We participated uh, in Magna Hoedown, which took a great deal of energy. We had a great uh, Hillary House Ball, our fourth annual, and I saw most, but not all of you there last year, so no names shall be mentioned. But next year, we're going to step it up on the fifth anniversary of the Hillary House Ball. We intend to make it a super ball, as we call it, because we're, we have a new goal we're setting in terms of number of people and attendance. So it, it's now that it's an established event, we're going to try to leverage it into something bigger and more important to the community of Aurora and hopefully more profitable to our organization. We had a wonderful program with uh, Highland General Motors called Drive, uh, Drive for a Cause, which got us several thousand dollars. We have a Canadian Museum's operating grant, or CMOG grant, once again. And we will, right now, we're putting together our annual appeal in which we send out a letter to all of our members asking for a donation for the year in addition to their membership fees. It is always well, well received, and we always receive substantial money from it. Other highlights other than fundraising. In terms of exhibitions, I refer to the fact we had four. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we ran one called Many Happy Returns, My Dear Boy, which is all about some letter writing done within the family during World War I. We put on Let's Talk, an oral history Aurora project, which was an entirely online exhibit, our first time we've ever done this. This was done with federal funding. It was a wonderful uh, exhibit in, in several respects, one of which is we asked for and received the ability to acquire some new information technology and video technology, which eventually became the core of our new IT infrastructure, which is put together recently uh, as, a, uh, as a project by one Richard Hess, and we now can boast some of the finest IT, uh, I think, in the not-for-profit sector around here. So we're in very good shape in terms of our underlying technology. Tennis in Canada, I've already referred to, and I'll talk about in a minute, and we're right now doing art at the manor for the fourth time. Other programs, we held three lectures on various topics. We had four Hillary concerts. We had 49 kids programs, 
Some of them focused around the tennis, as you can see in the photo, but we've always had children's programming around Camp Hillary and many other things. They were extremely well received this year, and uh, we're obviously going to put emphasis on it again. We had a dedicated summer student who focused on that program uh, as, a, as her sole focus, and she did an extraordinarily good job. And I think uh, we established ourselves as a great way for kids to spend some time during the summers. As I referred earlier, we're going to have three groups of seniors come through the uh, house this year on a formal tour. So we have reached out through our education consultant, who was uh, retained with Town Grant, to speak to each of the uh, seniors' uh, residences here in town. And the ambulatory uh, seniors will be invited to Hillary House for a tour, lecture, and a tea, and a discussion. The non-ambulatory ones, we're going to try to find a way to reach out by visiting them with various artifacts and various other materials. And we had countless other programs that we participated through the years. As you know, we're always there for doors open. We had hundreds and hundreds of people for doors open. We're there for culture days. We're there for the, uh, um, the, uh, everything the town puts on. We're there at the Santa Claus Parade, the Canada Day Parade, and I think the, uh, the street fair. So everything that is uh, around, we're part of, and we're delighted to be part of it. Around 2015, the, the, uh, the tennis took a lot of our time and energy, but it also gave us a lot of satisfaction. With permission, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm just going to walk around and hand over two of these to each end of the council who can then exchange them. And if you do, refer please to page 16. That's where you'll see the, uh, the interview with the young lady who won the um, uh, gold medal in the Pan Am Games for women's doubles tennis, who attended Hillary House, and the interview conducted on our lawn, as well as the overall program that we ran. So that went, uh, went very well. So it enabled us to do a lot of things, including an extensive amount of upgrading to the, to the uh, grounds, which were part of the 50,000 we invested this year. So let me just go through some key performance metrics for 2015. And as I have mentioned, in the 17-page report, there are many more and you're invited to uh, spend as much time on that as you like. But uh, the important ones for us are that uh, we have the following results. Visitors to Hillary House this year were up 22%, largely driven by our programming. Our total membership is up 15%, and as of uh, the Monday of this week, I guess today, we're at 294 active dues-paying members, which today for a historical society is an extraordinarily strong, robust number. New members year-to-date, we have 55. Every year you have some attritions through uh, moving away, uh, disinterest and, uh, and people demising. We had some of that, but net net with 55 new ones coming in, we're now standing at 294 and we uh, want to grow that again next year. Our volunteer hours are about 3,525. That's up 17% and that's only year to date. That number will be augmented by the considerable volunteer effort that happens in and around Christmas time. So by the time that is uh, in place, I think the number will certainly be into the 20% range. So how am I doing so far? Here we go. Let me uh, give you some key financial metrics for the year. Now, don't, uh, please don't try to add or subtract these to each other because they are highlight numbers. They do not, it's not a table. Our operating surplus uh, has um, basically uh, been extremely good. So last year we ran a surplus of $19,000. This year we're forecast to be at $15,000 and we're projecting a, a surplus into 2016 of $7,000. In 2013, we ran a deficit of 48. But with the surpluses we've been running, with the John West grant and other grants, uh, our financial situation is now sound. We are basically restored to sound and good financial health. You need not worry about that in any respect. Our fundraising revenue is a highlight of the year, as I mentioned. It was $26,000 in 1913. Last year it went to 35. This year it was 50. On the previous slide it said 52. The right number is 50. Our projection next year is 45. Uh, we hope to overachieve that, but we're setting a high bar. And for an organization of our size, all volunteer with really only one and a half full-time staff, it's an extraordinary effort and it takes a great deal of focus and energy. In terms of grants, we had a wonderful year. We received $124,000 of grant money. That includes the town grant, but we received grants from five other organizations. So we are thoughtful but aggressive in looking for money and uh, making sure that we are aware of and tapped into the kind of money that's out there for organizations of our type, for programs of our type. So we expect to do the same again next year. And once again, if we are more successful, we can exceed that number, and that's always our goal. Our total operating expenditures, if you want to call that our annual budget for 2015, will be $209,000.
up quite a bit from last year when we had a significant reduction in staff. Uh, but we intend to maintain about $181,000 in 2016 with one caveat. We are applying for money for one very substantial program and exhibition next year. If we were to receive that money, that number would grow in commensurate with the amount of funding we would receive from it. But we have one very ambitious funding proposal, which we hope will come to pass. Our plans for 2016. Um, we have uh, six exhibitions we're planning, but we have the following that we're already down the road on. First one, we are planning one called the Road to Vimy. It should be uh, known that Vimy Ridge is not only an important uh, milestone in Canadian history. In fact, many people think it's one of, if not the most important milestone in modern Canadian history. It's a very important milestone in Aurora history, and it's a huge milestone in the Hillary family. The Hillary family, as I'll talk about in a minute, did lose one of the sons to Vimy Ridge, injuries suffered at Vimy Ridge. Uh, the collection is, is, uh, is rich in Vimy Ridge and World War I material, all of which is interpretable into an extremely good, interesting, and engaging exhibit, which we intend to do. So the road to Vimy, Aurora and the Great War, we will repeat art at the manor. We have approached, been approached by and are in discussions with Cardinal Carter about an art exhibition, uh, which would entail the student art. And we're also contemplating something called the Travels of Nora. And for your information, Nora Hillary was the last Hillary to occupy Hillary House. She was an unmarried woman who left at age 91. She was an avid world traveler. She's a fascinating person in her own right. And she left behind an unbelievable collection of fascinating objects pertaining to her world travels, which you guys are dying to see. And I think you're going to get a chance this year. Finally, we will continue our speaker series. We've already got three of the four lined up. Our concert series will go. We have four events planned. Our education outreach will continue into the schools and to the seniors. We're planning an antiques roadshow type of event in the summer, early fall. And something that we're, uh, we may experiment with this year, we hope to, is an antique car show or rally. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. Once again, we'll be there for all of the town events. Doors open, culture days, Canada Day, street fest, home show, everything. We will be wherever the town of Aurora is. Other internal matters. We tend to maintain our current staff complement. Uh, we had a full turnover of staff in 2014. We now have a staff that I describe as small but mighty, extremely focused, extremely capable, and they're getting done. We really haven't missed a beat. So our staff, supported by a great deal of extra effort from our board and volunteers, has continued to deliver as good and as much programming as we've ever had. We also intend to increase our capital expenditures on Hillary House next year. The House has a little bit of catch-up to do. We've identified some areas that need uh, redress, and we've set aside $20,000 above normal repairs to handle a couple of needed uh, changes to the House. And one of the things we intend to invest some of that in is a multi-year engineering study so we can get ahead of the game and know where we will be spending money on the House for the next five to 10 years. There's always surprises in a house that's 153 years of, old, of age, but we can minimize the surprises, we can set priorities, and we can ensure that the things are being handled in an appropriate fashion. So we'd like to get the engineering study done earlier so that we can allocate our uh, repair and uh, investment efforts accordingly. There are some enhancements we want to make as well. We want to do some improvements around washrooms, around kitchens, and ultimately around exhibition space and storage space enlargement. That's another conversation, however, beyond this one. So in addition, we have a couple of special projects which are uh, worthy of putting on the table now. One of them is going to ask you for more help. Hillary House has always had one major liability, and that's parking. It's inadequate, and it's relatively a adventurous to get into the Hillary House parking lot off of Young Street. For anybody who's ever turned into Hillary House off of Young Street, it's something of a hair-raising adventure at times. It also is a limiting factor in terms of our ability to attract groups. It's also a limiting factor in terms of our ability to attract schools and some other seniors that require larger conveyances. We are going to ask the town to find a way to provide us with a parking lot by allocating part of the soon-to-be unused storage depot at the back of Hillary House, which abuts right onto the Hillary property, to either uh, grant us, sell us, or give us in perpetuity access to enough property to build a parking lot that can accommodate an appropriate size group. Uh, I think the plans for the, uh, for the site uh, have it being largely unused. It's all floodplain land. It hasn't really been, uh, nothing's been done to it uh, that we can see visibly in the last year or so. And it would be an enormous plus to Hillary House to be able to provide parking with a proper set of paved access up from the rear of the property rather than off of Young Street. 
I'd love to all of you come by to Hillary House. I'll personally escort you down through the thickets and show you exactly where this should be. But we believe that we could leverage a town grant with other grants, notably a Trillium grant. So uh, if we can get some um, gift in kind from the town, we believe we can make that into some money and we can make a huge difference to Hillary House's access and we can enlarge the purpose of the, of, the, of the facility and the utility of it to the town of Aurora. Second, special projects. On the lower left uh, thing, you see a picture of uh, John McIntyre's coach house, now owned by Mrs. Laura Kai. It's a very important building. That's, that coach house was built in 1876. It is the last remaining horse and buggy era coach house in Aurora. It's an outstanding example of its type. If you look carefully, you can see that it's got a full height double door for horse and buggy. This is a, a period of time when uh, prosperous people would have maintained their own conveyance and their own horse. On the lower level is a stable. On the middle level is where the, uh, the buggy would have been stored. And on the upper level, you can see the door where there was a hay mow. So they would have backed up a, a wagon and they would have shoveled hay into that upper door, which would have been shoveled down to the horse on the lower level, which would have then carried the people about town. There is not another building left like it in Aurora. We are in discussions with the present owner, Mrs. Kai, to uh, preserve it and relocate it to the Hillary property. We're not sure exactly what we'll do with it yet. There's a lot of opportunities to use it. We can certainly use storage. We can certainly use exhibition space. We could certainly use office space, all of which would require a, uh, an augmentation to the building's capability. But it is very, very worth salvaging, and our intention is to do that. So that's on our docket today. We do not presently have money set aside to do that, but we will work to that purpose if and when the opportunity becomes clarified. The final one is the 1932 Chev Roadster, which some of you had a chance to see at the Hillary House Ball. That beautiful blue car was owned by Dr. Norman Hillary for 15 years, and it was kept at the Hillary House site for 15 years. 83 years later, the restorer has come forth and would like to have it restored to the rightful owners being the Hillary occupants. So we're going to, in discussions with the uh, current owner. They're early preliminary discussions, but he'd like to find a way to have it come back home as he sees it. So it's an astonishing car. It's one of the finest of its type anywhere. He spent years, years, and years restoring it, but it is a genuine, bona fide Hillary House artifact, which was bought at a car dealership in Aurora in 1932 on the site of the Treasure Hill, where the Treasure Hill condominiums are being put up right now. So there was a garage there in 1932 which sold Chevys on the side, and uh, it's now, uh, th the car was purchased there by Norman Hillary. It conveyed him back and forth to medical school, then to work, then it went to a sister, then it went to a cousin, then who, who knows where it went. It turned up in British Columbia. It spent 33 years in British Columbia, the last 10 of it in a hut, and the uh, current owner brought it back on a trailer and spent eight years in its restoration. And it is something he would like to see come back our way. He's not offering it as a gift, we're trying to negotiate it as some kind of an acquisition. So that's kind of where we're going for the following year. Plans for 17 I alluded to. We have two major uh, and important activities. Vimy Ridge is number one, I've already alluded to that. On the right hand side with the poppy is a picture of Stuart Hillary, who was um, one of the sons of Dr. Uh, Robert Michael Hillary, one of the nine children. He perished at Vimy Ridge, or from wounds from Vimy Ridge. The family was profoundly affected by it. It affected the entire uh, trajectory of the family. And uh, we will expand upon the Vimy Ridge theme in a major exhibition in 2017. Uh, finally, there's Canada's 150th. We have already started talking with other heritage organizations, five of them, in fact. We want to engage the town. I know that the town has uh, begun to put together a committee. But um, there is a tremendous amount to do here, and we have uh, We'd love to get started, and if anybody from the town who's got that responsibility can, can uh, uh, contact us, we'd begin uh, discussions immediately. We've already begun to roll on, a, on a, an exhibition around the 150th, which we think will be a very important and exciting for everybody here. Getting back to the tennis for a moment, um, the town was very helpful, and specifically I'd like to thank um, uh, Sarah Teen Camp and Jim Tree. They were tremendous as we put on our exhibition for tennis. They were generous in their help. They offered before we asked, and they were terrific. So the cooperation we had through that experience, the ones we'd like to have through next year, kind of illustrate the way we'd like to conduct ourselves. So in summary, we're asking for uh, the exact amount of money we asked for last year. We had a 20, uh, 2015 that we consider successful by all measures. We are in a very good, solid position based upon some uh, financial management and some prudence. 
2016 will be very active and very exciting. And the town of Aurora's support of $70,000 is essential to our mission. And respectfully, we would request that you uh, grant us that for 2016 operating year. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Councillor Abel's moving the motions on the screen. Is there a second, please? Councillor Humphreys, thank you. Speakers, comments, questions for Mr. Albino. Councillor Abel. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Albino, for coming forward and your board and supporters and volunteers. I am so pleased to see the direction that you have taken this in recent years. Um, it's, it's a very vibrant, robust committee that you brought out of, uh, out of a sleep and it's, and it's uh, very valuable. I'm, I'm in full support. I'm just I'm very enthusiastic about all the directions that you're going forward. Um, Thank you. I appreciate uh, some of the, the, the things that you're, you're going for that coach house, the last one mm -hmm. on, on the McIntyre. And, and of course, that car, I saw that. That's something amazing. I think the mayor would look very good <laughs> in that. Well, you know, we, we, we'll push it down the street, at least for the uh, uh, Canada Day and the Santa Claus parades once we own it. And we can draw lots as to who will get to ride in it. Very good. And that's the democratic process we it like is. here. Um, anyways, I'm, I'm in full support, and, and I congratulate you coming forward and uh, wish you all the best and, and look forward to participating. Uh, I like your thought about the 150th. I, I think uh, there's not a moment to lose in preparing that. That's uh, certainly a legacy for our, our youth going forward. Uh, we saw the attendance at the Remembrance Day, and so the Vimy Ridge, and I know Councillor uh, Tom is very avid uh, in, in the military uh, uh, history of our, of our proud nation here. So anyways, I just want to thank you very much for all coming forward. Thank you. On behalf of uh, our team here, I accept your, th I accept your thanks. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, you, Mr. Mayor. What a great presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so wonderful to hear and see, and the, the HS has come a, a long way and just done a great, great job. It's so exciting about the plan ahead. Um, you answered a lot of the questions I was going to have during your presentation by the end of it. There was one you touched on, and I don't, I don't, maybe I missed it, was you were, you were going to come back to why an antique car show. Did, right. Did you mention Well, if we, if we can find a way to have the antique car, um, come our way or come our way for usage prior to acquisition, we would like to parlay that into some kind of an antique car event which would have a heritage theme. Um, we have a uh, member of our board who's very avid and interested in antique cars. We have uh, and very willing to step up and do that. So I think there could be a lot of interest in that. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things which stuck in my mind is that at Fort York, when they did their um, World War I program, early in the summer, they did it with um, cars of the period, people, people dressed in dress of the period. That was part of the theme and part of the program. And one of our board members was there and took note of it. We've spoken to a couple of those people and they seem to be willing to participate in something else again. So it's an idea that hasn't taken specific form, but you can take a car like this 1932 car and you can imagine a million things with it. So if we have a chance to, we'd like to find a way to make that into something that will get Aurorans excited and even draw from a bigger catchment area. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I appreciate that. I think it would be really a really successful thing and uh, event. Um, also, in terms of your uh, fundraising efforts, have been really great to see year over year. You're right. You get the template, you get going, and you sort of find uh, that niche. And now the Super Bowl, which I will be there. I was intending to come to the you last were. one. I'm sorry I missed it. Uh, duly, Circumstances beyond, beyond du my control. Duly noted, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to every one but that one. Yeah, I but I, and I love it. I love the event. But um, in terms of that, um, you know, I think that's all I had. But just thank you again very much. It's great to see everyone here. And uh, wonderful you. of the, uh, the, the care and love for our Hillary House. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Tom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thanks, Bill, for coming out, and uh, to Thank members you. of the Aurora Historical Society for, for showing up as well. Uh, great presentation. A um, couple great events I just wanted to highlight. Uh, I, I uh, had the pleasure of attending the two uh, scotch tastings that were with, uh, one was at Hillary House, one was at Chat's head office. Both, I think, were a joint effort between the two organizations. They were excellent. 
Um, and the tennis event was, I thought, was also very excellent. Uh, uh, it was all summer, but uh, there was a couple of really awesome events there and, and uh, a lot of hard work by you guys, so well done on that. Uh, I also uh, wasn't at the ball, but uh, I was at my stag party, so I'm not sure how much that <coughs> leeway I get there. So luckily, there's, I only have one of those, so I'll be there next year for sure. Let's hope uh, you're not having another no, one. No, for though. sure, for sure. Um, so I appreciate, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the presentation and, and hopefully it can come, come to that next year. Um, Mr. Mayor, I guess at this point in time, I'd like to just highlight that um, the motion on the screen is for 67500 which would be identical to our grant from last year, though the ask is for seventy. So um, I would request perhaps the same consideration given to the cultural center uh, to give to the historical society, which is to perhaps, if it's in order, to table the second line uh, to the next meeting in order to take a look at perhaps how we can accommodate uh, the $70,000 ask at the next budget meeting. I, I will come back to you just in case sure. there's any other speakers at this point. Fine. I, well, Thank I do you. have Councillor Thompson on the list. Then I'll come back to you. Thank you very much, and, and thank you, Bill, to you and, and all of the members of the Historical Society coming out this evening. Uh, I think it's great to see, uh, as you showed in the slides, that uh, memberships, visits, everything's improving, as is the financial health of the organization, and, and you guys have done a great job with that, and, and it's much appreciated. Um, one of the questions I was just going to clarify with our treasurer was that uh, the ask was 70, but at the last minute there was some, some reductions, and I think that's why it ended up at 67.5. So right. through you to Mr. Elliott, can you just clarify that? Through you, Mr. Chair, certainly last year the Historic Society uh, requested $70,000 and it was on the table and that was a familiar number t with the town as in uh, 2014 was 70000 but in the uh, final hours of the budget discussions last year, uh, this particular budget line item was clipped by uh, $2,500, um, as were many other line items as you may recall. And uh, so then this year uh, in the budget preparations, uh, this line item was uh, flatlined in budget preparations as were, again, many other budget lines. Uh, many others were also reduced. So um, uh, to be absolutely clear, the historic society between uh, Mr. Downey and myself were not informed of the draft budget value that is on your screen now. And so, uh, the other two organizations were clearly uh, communicated the, the council's direction, but uh, this organization was not. So I apologize for that, but uh, that's the background be behind the 67.5. Okay. Thank you. We gladly accept the 70 with no apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. And, and I would support uh, Councillor Tom's motion to table. I think uh, it's best for us to deal with all of the requests at the same time. Um, we can have conversations about the council contingency fund or where we'd like to draw it from or you know, how we would like to deal with it. So um, I'd be supportive of it uh, after everybody's had a chance to talk. Thank you. Councilor Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you. Thank you for the presentation, Bill. It's, it's excellent. And, and to the group, uh, I think you guys have done a wonderful job uh, finding efficiencies and, and looking at how to grow the revenue side of, of, of the, of the uh, Aurora Historical Society. So I think that's great. And I want to commend you and the group for doing that. And uh, I agree. I, I, I think we should just table this and look at it overall during the, our next budget meeting and look for places to find funds if we can. Thank you. Any other speakers? Mr. Obano, congratulations uh, on a good presentation and more importantly on the growing success of the organization. Uh, I think we're all very pleased to see in the direction you're going in. Uh, it, uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it, it speaks well. Um, not only to, to the town responding to what you're doing, but, it, but to what you are doing. So you're obviously making a difference in the organization, you and, and the board of directors, and obviously your employees. And we do thank you all for coming out tonight as well. So thank you very much. My only suggestion on the car, and I, I agree with Councillor Abel, I would look terrific in it. Uh, but given the, the Santa Claus parade weather we had two years ago, you probably wouldn't want to do that. No. <laughs> It is a it is a rag top. It can be a problem yeah. in a, in a yeah. rainstorm. Bad, 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 but filled with snow would look yeah. horrible. But on behalf of the uh, whole organization that came out tonight, thank you very much for your kind words, and, thank you. and we hope to get good news from you. Thank you, Council. All in favor? No. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Councillor Thompson. Thank you, sir. Councillor Thompson. I'll, I'll move the, to table the second clause. Okay. And was seconded by Councillor Thompson. No further comments or questions. Motion to table. Yeah, right. Okay. But we do have. 
All in favor? Contrary. Carried. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. We have to vote to receive the presentation. All in favor of uh, receiving the presentation, Councillors uh, Maracas and Abel. All in favor? Contrary? That's carried. Thank you, Councillor. Now, we will, um, there was one, one member of the public who wished to speak earlier. I think actually that gentleman left. So that's gone. If there's anybody else who just has some general comments on the budget, we're always happy to hear that. Council, it's, it's not on the agenda, but if anybody has specific, we're, we're having the, the operating discussion next week, Mr. Elliott? Next week? Three, Mr. Chair, next Monday night, next Monday 7 o'clock. Uh, so we've, um, if people have had an opportunity to go through the operating budget at this point, if there's anything uh, that you would like to discuss, uh, if you have an opportunity to uh, let us know now, and, and Mr. Elliott, in this case, just Mr. Uh, Downey, might have an opportunity to relay that, either themselves or relay it to staff. If anybody's got any specifics they'd like to uh, to bring at this point, Councillor Abel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to know a little more detail on the operating budget for the museum, please. Okay. Anybody else? When we uh, this just gives it'll give staff an opportunity to um, uh, prepare, Councillor Tom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just would like to know perhaps a bit more detail, and I'm not sure, if, I apologize if it's already here, but if it's not, more detail with uh, respect to Ice Time and the Junior Tigers, the Aurora Junior Team. I'm sorry, could you just clarify what do you mean by more information? What, 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 is, the, what is the total number the town uh, is expecting to get from the, from the Junior? So you like total team? revenue numbers? That's right. Okay. Councillor Kim and then Councillor Marcus. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, earlier, we, uh, I mentioned about the uh, more long-range uh, certainty or cost certainty for, for the cultural centre. Um, is can you, can you come back? Uh, I'm not sure if it's impossible in such a week, in, in one week's time, but can you come back with some options that we can look at in terms of uh, being able to forecast uh, multi-year? Um, So just some options? Mr. Elliott? Three, Mr. Chair. I think uh, I'd probably end up referring that uh, to 2017's budget, wherein we, we anticipate bringing forward multi-year budgeting. Um, there can be some discussion of that at the Finance Advisory Committee as well when we, when we begin framing uh, what the 2017 budget directions will be. Councillor? Okay, um, I'll think about it some more, and uh, we'll see how we, how we can work with this. Councillor Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, I guess, the, Mr. Elliott, um, I know you, you've already answered it, but I just wanted to clarify. Are we going to be getting the sheets with the expanded expenditure listing tomorrow or the next before next week? Three, Mr. Mr. Chair, we are in the final stages of uh, developing those. We hope to be able to uh, hand those out tomorrow night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Council. And again, uh, between now and next Monday, if anything pops to mind, please give one of the directors a, a shout and we can have a more fruitful discussion next week. Could I please have a motion to recess? recess. Councillors uh, Maracas and Thompson, all in favor? Contrary? That's carried.